Yes, you read that title right. I built something that runs 60 million times faster than a native Zig implementation. No tricks, no tweaks, just raw performance and a deep understanding of what really slows things down. In this video, I'm not just showing benchmarks. I'm showing the gap between what we think is fast and what's actually possible. Grab your coffee and sit back. I promise this won't be just another coding video. It's a wake-up call. Before we dive into the benchmarks, just a quick note. This video is a direct continuation of my previous one. So if you haven't watched part one, you'll probably miss a lot of important context. I highly recommend watching that first, then come back here for the deep dive. Well, I'll start by creating a benchmark file for the UTF-8 module we developed in the previous video. After that, I'll add some comments at the top as usual, and then import the necessary libraries in the pack section. Then in the initialization section, I'll add some values of different lengths for later use in benchmarking. After that, I'll start writing the core section, which will contain two functions, one for Zig standard library and one for my IO library. Next, I'll start writing the benchmarking code for each function so that it matches the other function, ensuring fair benchmarks and comparisons without any excess or deficiency on either side. After that, in the bench section, I'll write some functions for the standard library and my library to run the benchmark a different number of times to test the code in different situations. Next, I'll start writing the run function that will run the benchmarks. I'll run the benchmarks on each library 10 times, 1,000 times, 100,000 times, 1 million times, and finally, 10 million times. I would love to run the billionth benchmark, but that would mean I'd have to wait hundreds of years before my computer exploded. So I'll stick with this. Anyway, at the end, we have the usage section, which contains the run commands and where we'll store the benchmark results later. However, let's now run these benchmarks and see the results together. Well, as we can see here, my library outperforms the standard library by a huge margin. But let's wait until all the benchmarks are finished and all the results are out. I think this will take a long time to finish. So I'll get back to you after two light years from now. Well, here we go. My library outperforms the standard library in all cases with an impressive speed difference. So let's go through these results one by one and see how many times my library is faster in each case. Okay, let's break down these numbers and see what they really mean. First, let's look at the 10 times data size test. The standard library processed 16,669 operations in 1.892 seconds, averaging about 113.5 microseconds per operation. And as for my library, it processed 100,000 operations in just 203 milliseconds, with an average of only 2.03 microseconds per operation. That means my library is already 56 times faster than the standard library with relatively small data. Now let's jump to the 1,000 times test. The standard library struggled to process just 148 operations in 2.154 seconds, with each operation taking about 14.5 milliseconds. Meanwhile, my library processed 100,000 operations in 189 milliseconds, averaging only 1.89 microseconds per operation. This makes my library about 7,700 times faster. The gap is widening as data gets bigger. Moving to the 100,000x test, things get even crazier. The standard library could only handle a single operation in 1.148 seconds. Just one. And my library? Still flying. 100,000 operations in just 196.9 milliseconds, averaging 1.97 microseconds per operation. Do the math, and that's about 583,000 times faster. Then, for a data size a million times larger, the standard library took 12.348 seconds, again, for just one operation. And my library? It's still running efficiently. 100,000 operations in 210.7 milliseconds, averaging 2.1 microseconds per operation. That's a 5.9 million times speed difference. And finally, the extreme test, 10 million times the data size. The standard library needed nearly two minutes, 118.13 seconds, for just one operation. Meanwhile, my library handled 100,000 operations in just 205.8 milliseconds. That's about 2.06 microseconds per operation. This last test shows my library is 57.4 million times faster. Okay, hold on a second. I think at this point I'm supposed to apply for a Guinness World Record, the fastest code ever written. Actually, forget Guinness. I want an Oscar for this. No, wait, not Oscar. I'm not walking on stage wearing a curtain like John Cena. <laughs> I think I deserve a Nobel Prize in computer wizardry. All right, jokes aside, and you're probably wondering, how the hell is this even possible? But before we dive into the deep technical breakdown, before we talk about why this code is insanely fast and what makes each implementation so different, let me take you back in time, exactly three years ago. 
I wrote a post on code review titled, I created something much faster than the string type of the standard library. Sounds familiar, right? I was excited, passionate. I thought I'd cracked the code, but what actually happened hit me like a truck. The benchmarks I presented back then were technically accurate, but unintentionally misleading. Why? Well, for two main reasons. First, Parts of my code were being executed at compile time instead of runtime, thanks to aggressive compiler optimizations. So the performance gains I observed weren't entirely due to my implementation. Second, I was benchmarking in debug mode without optimization flags like O2 or O3. As many pointed out, that doesn't reflect real world performance at all. So while the numbers looked impressive, they didn't tell the full story. That experience taught me a valuable lesson. Benchmarks can be deceptive if you're not careful. And that's why in this video, we're going to dissect everything step by step to understand what's really happening under the hood. And here's something I wrote at the very end of that post. I will not delete the code. My mistake does not mean my end. On the contrary, I will learn from this mistake and come back soon with something strong. At the time, I had no idea how or when. But today, this video is that comeback. So if you've ever felt like a failure, if you've ever doubted your skills, if you've ever been humbled by your own ambition, just remember, mistakes don't define you. What you do next, that's what matters. Now let's get back to the benchmark and figure out what's really going on. Okay, let's take a look at these results. Something really weird is going on here. It looks like my library is processing 10 operations in roughly the same time it takes to process 10 million operations. 100% something is wrong. Logically, these results can't be correct. Why? Well, let's go back to the code. Do you see these dashes here? This is actually the cause of these misleading results. But before I explain the technical reasons for this, let's just change the flag used in the build process. Instead of using fast, let's use something like safe and see what happens. Well, now it all makes sense. My library is still faster, but not a million times faster like it was a while ago, but just a few times faster. The logical explanation here is that when the compiler used the fast flag, it skipped a lot of instructions in this code, which are mostly those instructions preceded by the underscore sign. Why does the compiler do this? Simply put, in zig language. When we use an underscore to store something, we are often, but not always, telling the compiler that this instruction may not be used. So, because my functions is inline, the compiler looked at it and said, since this instruction is not used, why don't we skip it? And that's exactly what happened. But in contrast, when we use the safe flag, it told the compiler not to use those extreme optimizations. So the compiler kept the instructions, and here, the truth became clear. But what if we wanted to use the fast flag to see the actual results? What if we wanted to force the compiler to keep these instructions and not ignore them? What should we do in this case? Simply put, since the compiler skips these instructions because they aren't actually used in the code, the solution is simply to use them. And we can do this any way we want. In my case, I'll just change those underscores to variables. And then I'll use those variables however I want, just to tell the compiler that I'm using them and that they have a real use in the code, so they shouldn't be ignored. Now, if we run the benchmarks using the fast flag, we will find that it handles the matter as it should and that it now does not skip any instructions and thus the results appear correctly. Pretty wild, right? Honestly, this could qualify as an April Fool's bug, but it's so important. I had to make a video about it. I couldn't find anyone talking about this on YouTube in detail. And now that we've cleared this up, my library is still faster. So let's dig into the... Why? <laughs> Sorry about that. I was saying, let's find out the actual technical reasons behind this performance. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel because, as you can see, I provide high quality content, but the numbers are still low. So don't forget, as do 80% of viewers. Also, if the number of likes reaches 1,000, I'll start creating the Build Your Own X series, as you requested in the previous video. Oh, and one last thing. I intend to publish many high quality training courses, starting with the basics of computer science and passing on everything I've learned over the past 20 years, completely free of charge right here on YouTube. So if you find these videos beneficial and want to continue, I'd be happy if you bought me a cup of coffee via the links below. Also, don't forget to check out our GitHub repository and give it a star. You're always welcome to contribute and help maintain and improve it. It's not just mine. It's ours. Without your support, we couldn't keep going. Thanks for watching and see you in the next part where we'll go into more detail and compare my implementation to the standard library implementation and explain the reasons for the speed. So stay tuned.